state your name and rank. Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, this is Sergeant Peterson. Hi, my name is Megan Keller. I'm an airman in the U.S. Air Force. My name is Captain Matt Holder, and I'm an officer in the United States Marine Corps. My name is Colonel Todd Hernizen. Robert J. J. Hoff, Sr. The private first class. My name is Latina Dorsey, and I attained the rank of E3, which is a Lance Corporal. My name is Corporal Snyder. What is your branch, and why did you pick the branch that you joined? I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, I served six years uh, within the Marine Corps. Upon initially going to the uh, recruiter's office, I actually uh, had decided to choose the United States Army uh, in following my older brother's footsteps. He was two years older than me. Uh, however, upon the arri arrival, uh, no one was there for the United States Army and a fine uh, young man uh, in a Marine Corps uniform approached me. So I would say that the United States Marine Corps chose me. I'm in the United States Marine Corps. I joined the Marine Corps because uh, growing up, my grandfather was a Marine in Vietnam, and I always wanted to follow his legacy and uh, do something great for the country. The Marine Corps is known as the few and the proud, and it really is. I chose the Marine Corps because I wanted to work with and serve with the toughest of the tough, the strongest of the strong, and the best of the best. And that's what the Marine Corps has to offer. Army Air Force. And I chose it because I wanted to fly. I joined the Air Force to work in the medical field, get an education, and travel. Currently, I'm in the Air Force. I'm in the Air Force Reserve. Um, I transferred there from the Army. So I was originally in the Army, in the Army Reserve. Um, after I did my leadership time in the Army, uh, because I had an engineering degree, I did engineering in the Army, but the, uh, the Air Force units uh, that I looked at offered me more um, opportunity to do uh, more staff engineering and more planning, so I moved to the Air National Guard and now I'm currently in the Air Force as an engineer. So through all the branches, I've been in the engineer field. Uh, but I was originally Army, and now I'm Air Force. So I am currently serving in the United States Army. Uh, I chose that branch because I wanted to work on helicopters, and they have a, a good aviation branch that focused on three different types of helicopters, and I chose one of them. So that is my primary job in the uh, U.S. Army. Do you recall your first couple days in the service. What did they feel like? How did you get through boot camp? So boot camp in the Marine Corps is very tough. It's very challenging, but it's also it's very rewarding. So I knew as soon as I got there, it was gonna be one of the toughest things that I have ever done. But to this day, it is still the proudest moment of my life, graduating and being commissioned in the United States Marine Corps as an officer. It is a phenomenal experience. Uh, those first few days are very long. Um, very challenging physically and mentally, but ultimately it's that training that builds you up, makes you one of the Marines and really prepares you for the challenges you're going to face uh, in serving this country. I do recall my first couple of days. Uh, getting to boot camp wasn't easy. It was the first time that I'd ever been away from home, from home for a long extended period of time. So I was a little nervous and scared to be away from home. I miss my family. But once I got there, I met the group of guys that I was with, and uh, they made everything a lot easier. My first days in the Air Force were spent in basic military training at Lackland, Texas. Basic military training is designed to be mentally and physically challenging. The biggest thing that helped me through basic military training was reading and writing letters. Which wars did you serve in? Where did you go? What was your job or assignment? I was in World War II. I am stationed in the South Pacific, South Pacific. My job was a motor pool dispatcher. So I serve in the current war on terror. Um, I served uh, nine months in Iraq in 2018 to 2019. Um, and again, I'm a Apache helicopter mechanic, so my main job is to focus on anything that breaks mechanically on the aircraft needs to be fixed as fast as possible, especially in a deployed environment. So 
I was deployed two times uh, as part of the uh, war on terror after 9-11. The first time I left was in, uh, I was in the, gone the summer of 2002, and I worked as an engineer. We were building um, a war station out of a warehouse for the potential attack of Iraq um, and to get the air station ready to go for that. Uh, then I, I did staff work for in the States for a long time, and then in 2009, uh, I went to Afghanistan, so I was stationed in Kandahar Airfield in Afghanistan, and I was the United States Master Planner for the airfield, which meant I went to meetings and I represented the United States um, in the coalition, because it was run by actually the British and the Dutch, so I was the U.S. representative to make sure that our projects and our housing and our troops were taken care of. I was able to serve in Operation Desert Shield uh, around the time frame of 1991, uh, a few years after that, under uh, our Commander-in-Chief, President George Bush. Please tell me about one of your most memorable experiences of being in the military. My most memorable experience was seeing those lights in San Francisco after being on the ship for several weeks. I would say the most memorable um, thing for me as I reflect on my uh, service with the United States Marine Corps is the overall experience of becoming a Marine, beginning as a young 17-year-old African-American female and being inducted into a uh, very uh, prestigious, uh, I would say, military branch uh, and becoming a part of one, a group of one, and it did not matter um, whether you were white or black, uh, female or male, we were all one, we were all considered green and we operated as such. Uh, there were differences um, sometimes because we do live in a world uh, where there are people of different color and different genders, but the Marine Corps works very, very hard. Uh, and that stayed with me that once a Marine, always a Marine. And we conducted ourselves as brethren. So for me, I was fortunate enough to be stationed in Germany for my first duty station. And over there, you get to go to a lot of field missions with a lot of different countries. So you get to go to field missions in Poland, in the Czech Republic, all over Europe and just to see how different armies work and to get to work hand in hand with them and also be with you know your friends as well and just to get to experience such a different type of job atmosphere was probably one of the most memorable uh, experiences and also the deployment uh, in Iraq as well. Uh, you get to definitely do your job at an up upbeat tempo and it's a lot of work and it's go 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 but it definitely makes you a better maintainer and mechanic so those are the most uh, memorable experiences for me in the Army. How did school and life before the military prepare you for the military? School before the military gave me the basic skills and knowledge to achieve goals in life. My family and the people I surrounded myself with before the military helped me be successful in the military. My friends and family taught me life lessons, good morals, and good work ethic, which helped me be successful today. Military is not for everyone, um, but um, I I was active. I was in shape. I had interest in serving. I didn't mind um, following directions, <laughs> so that was kind of start of it. Um, the main reason I took the scholarship, I took an army scholarship coming out of high school, was to pay for college, and that was one of the big benefits. Um, so as far as my upbringing, I guess it was just that I had a I didn't I didn't mind authority. I didn't mind following directions. I didn't mind being a leader and I didn't mind the physical activities. So that's really what prepared me for it. Um, and then, um, yeah, since then it's, uh, it's been a good adventure for me. This is my 29th year, so um, it was a good decision for me to, uh, to go into that. Well, in school, if you always listen to your teachers and you do what they tell you to do, they're looking out for your best interests. So the military is kind of the same way. Everyone who is in charge of you is looking out for you and they just want you to do the best possible thing that you can. So. So always pay attention to your teachers and do well in school. Um, I think in school, I really excelled in sports and physical activities. 
um, playing various sports in high school, middle school, and elementary school, baseball, soccer, football, um, you know, the usuals. I think also the challenging academic loads um, in looking at, you know, taking advanced courses where you can um, and making sure to help maintain those grades um, and living that, that structured lifestyle of having to be in class at a certain time uh, for a certain period of time. Um, that really helped prepare me in the structure to that, uh, to what you're going to see in life in the military. Um, the other piece is the people there, your teachers. Uh, they are phenomenal influences and, and can really help you and steer you in the right direction in whatever you're trying to accomplish. Um, so some of my teachers were prior military service members, and they really helped prepare me uh, to be, you know, be ready uh, when joining the military and then when continuing to serve in the military. Do you have any closing thoughts or words of encouragement to our students? What I always tell students is uh, the military is not for everyone because there is uh, there's a lot to it, right? So it's, it's not always very pleasant. Sometimes you have to serve in some not very pleasant places. You do have to be physically fit and you, you can't mind that very much. Um, and there are certain stressors that, that come with it. However, I think most students um, are suited for it. So, um, and it, but again, you don't have to choose to go. What I always tell students though is it's been really good to me. This is my 29th year. Um, I got a lot of schooling paid for. I had some of my kids' students paid for, their college paid for. I've got to travel all over the United States. Uh, when I was in the Army, um, you know, we were in the States in California and Virginia, and then I got to travel to Panama and Korea. Um, and then as part of the Air Force, I've been to Germany and uh, obviously to the, to the places Afghanistan and to, um, to Qatar, where I was the first time. So um, there's a lot of opportunities. I guess what I would encourage students to do as you, as you go on through your high school career is make sure that you know all the benefits that come with the military so that you can make a decision on whether, whether it's something you want to, want to try. Um, and if you do, I think the benefits and the opportunities are, are really good. So that would be my encouragement. Just make sure you know or you talk to someone. Reach out and talk to someone and find out uh, what's available to you. Whatever you want to do in life, just always make sure you try your hardest and uh, never give up on your dreams. I would suggest that I'm a young man that graduating these schools or woman should chose a career that he liked. I mean, if you're looking to join, you know, the Army or any military branch, I mean, it's it's a great experience. I say nothing, uh, no negative. I mean, it, it's done great things for me. But you don't only just have to choose the military to serve your community or anything. You can go so many different options. So just always look at, you know, what you can do for your community and how you can help out people. Military um, service is not for everyone. But I do believe most students uh, could benefit from it. Uh, it it, pro it provides a established, proven system um, that brings cohesiveness, that brings uh, discipline, that gives people, uh, young people, young students, young citizens, a focus if they're not uh, right off wanting to attend college. Uh, there are so many different job um, jobs within the military, within the United States Marine Corps, that are very, very necessary and that are very, very uh, powerful to help establish a young life and give them, again, focus, discipline, um, and a good foundation. Uh, I would not change my uh, beginning years. Uh, again, I went in, I was uh, inducted at the age of 17. It really did lay the foundation for me to be uh, successful uh, in life. And that is not to say that I have not experienced challenges, uh, but the challenges were met with the tools and with the, the things that I learned as being a Marine, and they will always stick with me. If you want to be part of something bigger than yourself, travel the world, get an education, have a cool job, and lots more than maybe the military is for you. It was a good choice for me because I get to have a cool job title without actually having a degree. I also get my education during my service and get to travel, plus a lot of other benefits. The military can always be an option for you, you just have to think about it. Serving uh, the United States uh, military in any branch, uh, in any function, is an absolute honor and it's a privilege. 
and that privilege is not given easily. Um, so it is challenging, no matter which route you go, uh, to enter the service and continue to serve. Um, but ultimately, is is extremely rewarding, and it, it is a uh, a very, very, very amazing opportunity for anybody uh, out there. Um, I continue to serve because I know that my future generations, my family, my future children, my future grandchildren, uh, live in a free country. Uh, they have all the freedoms and liberties that the United States has to enjoy. Um, and, you know, if I've got to sacrifice a few things to continue to serve to protect that freedom and liberty, uh, I'm happy to do that as long as it takes. Dedication of the flag. My great-grandpa Earl Leatherman is a veteran that served with the 101st Airborne in the United States Army. This group was known as the Screaming Eagles. They were known for the, their air assault operations. Earl served for four years. While serving, he was stationed between Knoxville, Tennessee, and then in Kentucky. My family and I are very thankful and grateful for his service and to everyone who served and continues to serve today. Raising of the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. <laughs> 